So now we'll move on to evaluate and improve goals using Bloom's Taxonomy. So Bloom's Taxonomy, again, allows you to label the knowledge and cognitive process dimensions that are illustrated. The next three slides provide the, the knowledge and cognitive process categories in Bloom's Taxonomy, their repetitions of those that you saw before. Um, applying these is a bit tricky and judgment is required. There may be multiple possible answers. Uh, and, it, and certainly in some of these cases, the goal statement isn't specific enough to tell. Um, and so think about how you would restate the goal to match any particular knowledge or cognitive process category. And that's a perfect example of how this is an iterative process where you want to be agile. You start with a goal statement. You use a resource like CLEA or Bloom's Taxonomy to reflect on it. And then you improve on it. You might break it into multiple learning objectives potentially. So here they are that, that you should have these three slides at your reference. Maybe pull them up in a separate screen. So can you make improvements to these, for example, to move them up to a higher level? I'll leave that to you to try to try it yourself and uh, please ask questions in the discussion board or chat if you have any. Um, so finally, the ABCD method. Uh, this is a method for writing learning objectives. Um, there's a re reading on this link in this slide. Um, a is for audience, B is for behavior, C is for condition, D is for degree. When you're writing a learning objective, ideally it should address all of A, B, C, and D. It should have an audience, and who should that audience be? It should be the learner, not the instructor. It should specify a behavior. What do you expect students to be able to do? This behavior should be overt, observable, even though what is desired is a covert or mental activity that is a knowledge component. If you can't see it, hear it, touch it, taste it, or smell it, you can't be sure your audience really learned it. Condition, so that's how are they going to demonstrate it. Under what circumstances or context will the learning occur? Well, what will the student be given or already be expected to know to accomplish the learning? Those are context factors. Degree is how much you, you want students to be able to accomplish. How well will the behavior need to be performed for you to be happy in this particular class? And at what level? Do you want total mastery? Do you want uh, partial mastery? Uh, maybe you want uh, them to do it fast. Uh, in practice, A and B are absolutely necessary. C and D uh, are desirable, but often uh, not fully worked out in many practical situations in which learning objectives are written. Uh, so here are some examples of good objectives using the ABC method. The parts of them are, are indicated here. Often the context, C comes first. Give and examples and non-examples of constructivist activities. A, A is the audience, the student. The audience is the student, always the student. And uh, B is a behavior. will be able to accurately identify, there's your action verb, the constructivist examples and explain another action word why each example is or isn't a constructivist activity and now the degree in 20 words or less. So please read over the others. Um, no, notice the, um, there's also some uh, connection to the Bloom's level here uh, for, you, for you to think about as, a, as examples. Uh, so try A, B, C, D on these goals. Focus especially on A and B. Um, again, C and D are ideal, but often not fully achieved. Uh, so who, it, there's no audience in that teach Chinese vocabulary, and if there is, it's the instructor, not the learner. So uh, they're directed at teacher, not learner. Should be learn Chinese vocabulary. It's still not great because there's a B, C, D, um, Kli, and Bloom, right? There's no behavior there. Learn is not an observable, overt behavior. Learning is unobservable. Provide and explain examples and non-examples of constructivism can be improved. Um, it appears directed at the teacher, so uh, again, you want to convert it to be oriented towards the uh, 
student and I see here that this is an error in the slides, this should be something like explain examples and non-examples of constructivism. So please step through uh, these further examples. The ABCD method is, is great um, and you can uh, get a lot of practice by looking through all these and practice all three of these techniques for doing the learning objectives better on these examples and on other examples.